Okay. So um, good afternoon, everybody. It's Beverly Poole here and uh, from Aspire for Business Academy. Um, I'm online today talking to Mark Fritz, who is a leadership development consultant. Uh, his company is Proceeder Limited, uh, but he does trade as Mark Fritz and he has the most incredible portfolio of products that he actually takes into companies. Now, the reason I wanted to talk to Mark is because I was fascinated by all the graphics and uh, all of the things that he actually puts out into the marketplace. And he's going to tell us all about that. Um, he has worked in a number of countries all over the world and has been in a unique position to talk to some of the larger organisations that you and I would just love to um, have uh, in our address book. So um, the, the emphasis of Business Voices is, as always, is to look at people's careers and where they've come from. Um, and uh, and last question is going to be for Mark, is what your teacher said. So I'm going to pass the stick over to you so that you can uh, start telling us all about you. And um, tell us about your career, Mark, which is just incredible. Well, I was very, very lucky. Uh, you know, I, I, I worked for Kodak for 25 years, but I started <laughs> in Rochester, New York. Uh, but uh, within three years, I started uh, traveling. Yes. And I worked uh, in the IT area that, that supported the computer systems for over 40, 40 50 countries around the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, I did some training in Singapore. Uh, and then uh, I had a unique opportunity to do, uh, you know, big bang system implementations in marketing companies in Egypt, yeah. Netherlands, Italy, and Japan. Wow, amazing. So you lead a team, uh, we go in, we, we, we spend three, four months training everybody up in the company in a whole mm -hmm. new suite of, of systems mm -hmm. to run the whole company. Yeah. We flip a switch on a Friday, five months later, uh, convert all the data Monday morning, everybody's doing something different. Fantastic. And so you, you learn, uh, you learn how to drive change. You learn, you learn how to deal with different people, different cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, I, my first one was Egypt and I really was a micromanager. <laughs> <laughs> I was micromanaging everything. By the time I did my fourth one, I was really leading the situation and yeah. in, I did it in Japan and in Japan, uh, I didn't know the language well enough to micromanage, so it, it didn't work anyway that way. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was a great education. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, the rest of my career, I was in international leadership positions. Mm -hmm. uh, I came back into Europe again, and I spent my last parts in Europe uh, leading a uh, customer service organization across Europe, Africa, Middle East, uh, 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 re-engineering or quality and for a number of years I was the uh, assistant to the regional manager and mm -hmm. helping with all the transformations that were happening yeah. across the company yeah so uh, I think it was it was interesting I, I spent a lot of time in Europe and they gave me a lot of things to do in terms of driving change because uh, you know I, I was neutral I wasn't a mm -hmm. Brit I wasn't French I wasn't German yeah. And if, if I screwed up, they could just ship me back to America. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with um, no, ex no expense spare day aspect. <laughs> exactly. So um, it was a it was a great education because I, I learned business from top to bottom. Yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, the experience of learning internationally is very important because, you know, at a distance, like we're doing today with the COVID and all the leadership, you yeah. can't see what people do. You can't manage activities. You can only, you know, lead them in terms of progress and achievement. Yeah. And I found uh, across countries, you can't tell people exactly what to do mm. because business gets done differently in different countries. So, of course, yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I developed a leadership style that that was trying to get people to take ownership of that without me having to be there telling them what to do all the time. Yes, of course. Yeah. 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 So, so that's what, when I left the corporate world, that's what I focused on a lot was, mm. was how to help grow leadership skills mm. in people so that they don't have to be a micromanager. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way I put it is, you know, micromanagement comes with the speed limit. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. You know, when you micromanage people, you yeah. operate to your head speed to keep, mm. you know, to tell them what to do and you're yeah. not using the, the speed of mm. the whole organization. Yeah, and I was—I um, actually wrote a piece this morning about uh, theory of mind, which you're probably aware of. 
and uh, and also the fact that you cannot change what people think you know you can only try and give them the skills to do the job um but you uh, people live their lives don't they with their own thoughts from their own experiences and until somebody comes along to sort of talk to them about you know the changes of of, of mindset if you like then um which is obviously what you do as well um then people can actually then start to develop themselves within their roles can't they so where is your favorite place to live where what was the most uh, where, where what was your your favorite place uh well i tell you the i think uh, from a lifestyle combination of work and everything was living in milan when, oh right uh, okay because yeah. the combination of the attitude towards life the food mm, and everything mm, like that mm. Uh, I should say J Japan because my wife is Japanese. So, all oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you've always got amazing food on your pictures on Instagram. There you go. You have to be paying attention. There you go. So that's yeah. That. So, uh, but but, it, but it, it's good to be in London because mm -hmm. uh, the the it, the world comes to London and it's mm -hmm. easy to get to the world from the air links. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, it's easy to get uh, the ingredients to make any mm. any food yeah that's Good right it is yeah 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 of course yeah yeah so, so, so from your from your sort of leadership uh, programs and things that you're running you've got this amazing set of um of branding that i identify with as soon as i see it i go oh that's mark because you've got some sort of cartoon type characters and you've got your you know your sort of your books and all the, the other things that you've, you've you've done so you can tell us about that um so what would you say were the key three three key points that you usually take into companies uh to uh, about their their leadership what would you say were your three key drivers for companies when you first go in there well i, I think the the, the 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 first thing for me is always that uh, the leaders have to take more of an outcomes focus mm -hmm. to their leadership and not yeah. activities and and uh, mm -hmm. and i always uh, can can really register that with them because i i ask them this question have you ever heard this expression in business uh, we need a meeting to discuss yeah <laughs> Right. Discussion yeah. is not an outcome. Yes, it's an activity. Right, yeah. Yeah, right? That's right. And, and, you know, and so that, that's the, the first thing. Um, the, the other thing, and, and I'm actually doing a, a session on this in, in mid-December, is uh, NIFO leadership. Right. Nose in, fingers out. Right. <laughs> you know, your nose has to be in. You have to know what's happening. Yeah. But, you, but you, your fingers don't have to be in there telling people what to do all what the to time. Do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah, I get that. And, and the last one that I try to get people to take on board too is that um, is a leader's how is who, mm -hmm. right? And, and you need to engage people around you uh, because I basically say this, if you don't have a who, who is the who? Yes, <laughs> it's who is who? Yeah, okay, it, yeah. It, it's always you. And, yeah. and, and so what the thing I found with, with, uh, with leaders often is they, they want to be the, the answer person. Yes, of course. And and, uh, and most successful leaders are not answer people; they're question mm. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because when you when you give an answer to people, you save them from thinking. Yes, and that's if, right. If you save them from thinking, you save them from growing. So, mm. you know, the, the the real key for me is is um, is getting leaders to take their eyes from the day to day, move it up a bit, and and how can they enable the team to deliver without them? Yes. Yeah, which is the ultimate, isn't it? Is that the machine will work when you're not there? Yeah, I mean, you know, later in my career when I was running bigger organizations and people from all different people in many different countries, I thought my leadership success was this. My job is to enable that the right conversations are happening about mm -hmm. the right topics and mm -hmm. I'm and I'm not in them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, but if you're if you're in that position, aren't you? You're just like managing the process and giving people the opportunity to uh, to develop their own skills within a project. And you you know work with some amazing projects. So tell us some about some of those uh, the companies that you've worked with. Certainly, and you were talk talking to me about the company in Japan. Well, I, I, I you know, as I say, I worked uh, I worked for Kodak for a long time, but I worked yeah. all across the world. So I mean, basically, my, my goal was to stay away from the head office because yeah. uh, I, I always look at it this way. It's easier to sin when you're further away from God. <laughs> <laughs> out of sight and out of mind, is that you, it? You, you can do your <laughs> own thing. Someone, yeah, yeah you can do your own thing. But, yeah. I, you know, you know, and also through through other linkages and everything, I, I work with uh, different companies all around. And, and mm. uh, the latest one, I work with Weezing Bank in, in Madrid. 
but yes. I also work with Santander Bank uh, in in Spain as well, mm -hmm. and um, and and also uh, some companies in the Middle East. Mm, mm. so still having the opportunity to travel around and um, stay in a way which is great so we were talking before about the sort of the daily um pointers that you give to people and the daily reminders which i think is a great idea because often i've been in training courses and of course i am i offer training through my academy platform um and and it's about really how you measure that so um in online learning in this whole digital education marketplace the only thing that we can actually do with our clients is to explain to them from the analytics how much of the training people are actually completing. We don't have any, uh, you know, any sort of final outcome for that other than to give them a lovely certificate at the end to say they've done it. So if we we, we sort of measure our training by how much people are actually doing on an e-learning programme. So, um, and we talked about this before. So with these daily reminders that you put out for people, um, what, what's the impact of that? What's the um, what's the impact of daily reminders? It gives people the opportunity to. Well, the daily reminder is, is it's always reminding people of a key learning. It's keeping it pinging every day. Something is coming through. So mm. their tendency is to to think about actioning it yeah. more, so they take it more into habit. Yeah. In in companies, the daily reminder is interesting. It's in a format that they can share with their team. Yes. So uh, example, uh, in the bank, uh, they often were bringing those learnings into their team meeting mm -hmm. or they would share it to their, to their team as well. So mm -hmm. what I found is that learning in a company is powerful mm. when, when the leaders share it onward. Yes. Not yes. just holding it for themselves, mm. but it's in a format they can share onward. Yes. And, um, in fact, it was interesting today. I was listening to a, a conversation about the future of leadership development. And one of the leadership development experts said, you know, the best training not only impacts the professional life, but impacts the personal life too. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it, it's helping with, with those type of aspects. So that's what I'm trying to do is it is, is also provide things that people can use on their daily basis, mm. not just in the office, mm. but, at, but at home as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, have a, I have a program which I run actually, which is called Steps to Success. And it takes people very much from sort of the compliance step, if you like, up to actually to achieving and how they can actually manage that into their own lives as well. So I think it's really important that we do that. And, um, and you know, as a business mentor, I can't do that until I know what somebody's actually doing, you know, personally. So the, the, the business driver has to come from that individual. Um, and if, if their own, um, you know, nest isn't comfortable, sometimes that can have a massive impact on what they're doing in, in their business activities as well. So I absolutely get that. So, um, so what's the focus for 2021 for you then, Mark? What are you going to be doing this year, next year? For 2021, uh, you know, I, I, I hope to have an online uh, uh, program up really focused about how the skills yeah. needed to develop this quote ownership type of leader yeah uh, and also i'd like to do more leadership programs in companies uh, and mm -hmm. really make an impact uh, going mm -hmm. in with uh, with really impactful sessions to kind mm -hmm. of open people's mindset and, and yeah. see possibilities but also mm -hmm. you know having those daily reminders <clears throat> in a way that that people can really share onward Yes. And, and also like the combination, I, I, I include coaching and mentoring along that. So it's nice to, to get to know the people through that, yeah. that as yeah. well. Mm. So that's where I get the, the most enjoyment uh, from. Mm. Mm. Seeing people are actually achieving and then taking that into the workplace is fantastic. Thank you. Um, so um, the question, obviously, we all want to know is what did your teachers say about you? Mine always said I talked too much and didn't concentrate, which is probably quite right because I actually turned out to be quite an artistic person. So what did your uh, what did your teachers say about you when you were at school? My, my, my <laughs> teacher uh, said to me, I said, why don't you apply yourself more? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he said? So, um, and um, isn't it funny how you sort of, um, when you sort of get older, you, you can still reflect on yourself as a child, can't you? And sort of all the experiences that you have sort of make you the person that you are um, sort of now really, and, um, um, and quite an impact really. And um, often I speak to people that have 
you know, had a, a good experience as a child or had a bad experience as a child and, uh, you know, and how you, how we manage that, the process of that through our lifespan development, which is what I'm extremely interested in with people, you know, is where maybe they got stuck, a bit like my own analytics on the, on the website, uh, is, um, and then helping people to actually to get through that stage so that they can, you know, sort of take themselves in their, in their business lives to the next, uh, you know, the sort of the next step up from my compliance step, if you like, so absolutely fascinating isn't it yeah so, you know what's interesting about mine is that uh you know i don't know i wasn't that motivated early yeah in my life and, and i wasn't going to go to college but yeah. i was recruited to to college because i was a very good golfer yeah and so my father said at least go to college to play golf and, <laughs> and then and then i i kind of woke up in the middle of college and and uh, what i needed to do yeah so once you did that, and then you obviously set off on your on your uh, travels. What was the very first job you had then, Mark? The very first job, uh, once my travels, it was first, yeah, first job from college. That was a systems analyst. All oh, yeah. right, okay. So you actually did go down that route. So you, you so you were actually applying yourself then, weren't you? Really? So whatever. Yeah. The <laughs> and, and at that time, I was I was in a very unique major. Um, mm -hmm. They had a major that combined business in IT. Wow. Before there was just IT or business. Yeah, yeah. I was in a special major that com combined business and IT, which was fantastic because it mm. gave you an appreciation of what you need to do. In fact, I yeah. stayed in IT for 10 years, not mm. because of IT, but because I could transform business. Yes, yes. And, uh, and also how you can apply what you know into business. Um, and the and the the procedures and the uh, you know the impact of that on the business system as well. It's absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. It's been really an absolute pleasure talking to you before this as well, and I've really enjoyed listening to what you've had to say. So um, if you could give people um, a little bit of your um, advice now, what would it be going forward into next year? Because it's such a difficult marketplace to um, evaluate at the moment for a start. Uh, with what's happening next we can't see a lot of the time what's going on with the staff uh, because there are a lot of them are working from home so what would you say would be your key sort of uh, bit of advice for people uh, my key advice would be be open to change mm -hmm. and and uh and 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 don't wait for for things take action mm. and and adjust along the way because mm -hmm. uh no one knows what's going to happen mm. yeah <laughs> Uh, so if for me, it's, 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 you know, try to be as clear as you can as to what is the next action you can take. Yes, that's right. Because that means you're always moving forward. Yeah. So I think this whole thing about agile, isn't it, is, uh, is, is the sort of the key moving forward, really. And um, business continuity and getting all that stuff right. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you today, Mark. And uh, I'm just going to say thank you very much. And I hope people actually, re you know, um, enjoy this uh, conversation that we've had today. Um, and uh, I'm just going to press the stop button just to say thank you so much. Thank and, you. Uh, look forward to, uh, that's okay. Look forward to uh, speaking to you again quite soon. Thank you.